what is going on guys i'm back with another video today i'm going to be talking about a specific topic in i guess you can say the whole card hobby as a whole but more specifically non-sports cards and that's or non-sports cards a good investment purpose if you were to get in today for long term and you it's this is it's a very relevant topic in sports cards you can go on youtube and look up how to invest in sports cards and there's a million different videos there it there just is but with non-sports cards it's just not a big hobby and i figured i'd talk about it maybe because if someone had an idea on investing in cards and then Maybe they wanted to get into this. So I'm going to talk about it. So I'm going to talk about a couple points for good and a couple points for bad. If I miss anything or if you don't agree with a point or if you agree, let me know anything down below. Uh, I'm making this video to maybe kind of put the topic of discussion out there for people who are trying to learn about non-sports cards. So yeah, I'm going to start off with the good here. And a good thing I think that would help out long term for non-sports cards is the culture aspect. And when you look at TV shows and movies, they kind of have a, a longer lifespan than some sports. And what I mean by that is, for me, I have a call, I have an example in front of me right now, and that's a Stranger Things, a Stranger Things autograph from season two. I think there's a good chance that my kids and even my kids' kids and so on and so forth have a good chance at watching this show at some point, just because I'm a fan and I'm obviously going to show my kids what things that I grew up watching, right? My dad's done that to me many a times with movies, especially American Pie. He showed me that movie. It's an absolute phenomenal movie, my favorite movie series of all time. I would have known that if he didn't show me that movie. So I think that that offers a, a nice, a nice long-term uh, goal, Not maybe not a goal, but a long-term thing for if my kids wanted to get into the card hobby. These are the cards. These are the cards that they would look for because they've seen these shows. They know these actors and actresses. So I think that would kind of help with, I guess, getting more eyes on the, on the, on the hobby. And another good thing, which is also a bad thing that I'll talk about in a little bit is the limited supply of, of non-sports cards. And if you aren't aware, Rittenhouse cards, I open up a lot of their products on the channel, especially Game of Thrones. That's the only Rittenhouse product I open. But the thing that I love is that they number their boxes. And this one is 6,000. There's only 6,000 of these boxes made. This one's a lower print run. This one's only a 5,000 print run. And it's just not even close compared to some of the sports card products out there. I mean, how many Prism boxes are made? Let's be real here. It's probably tens, maybe even hundreds of thousands of boxes. It's ridiculous. And especially if you do go to card shows, I mean, how many non-sports cards are you actually seeing at the show, right? You kind of have to buy on eBay at this point. I go to the, the Philly show sometimes. It's it's relatively close to me. Uh, and I just never see anything. I've been to the National once. There wasn't much there compared to sports cards when, you know what I mean? It's just, there's not much out there. And I think if you were to start investing today, you might have a good chance in buying cards that are relatively cheap. And for me personally, this is a Murray purple on card autograph numbered to 25, only 25 of these in the world. I paid $71 for this. $71 won't get you much in, in sports cards nowadays for, for investment purposes. It's just, it's just crazy. The, the difference in hobbies and, and prices, price ranges. It's just crazy. So, I mean, I thought that was a steal, $71. Some people think I'm, would think I'm crazy. I think that's a steal. And if I was looking at it long-term, Murray is arguably one of the best characters on Stranger Things. And $71 for an on-card autograph with only 25 in the world, that's just crazy to me. That's just crazy to me. So I think that would help, but also hurt. But I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. And lastly, I guess this kind of goes with culture in that... You know, the community aspect of, of film and, and TV shows, it's just crazy. Every Mostly everybody has a favorite TV show and everybody has a favorite movie. Everybody, most people have at least seen one movie. And I think that would help long term because if more and more eyes get, uh, get onto this hobby, right? Chances are a t your favorite TV show or movie has a card set and even then, I'll throw it up in the right-hand corner. I just made a video on this. And if you've ever seen The Boys, if you haven't, that's an amazing TV show on Amazon Prime. They actually do not have a card set at all. But what I did was I went through the cast and I found, I think, at least 
eight different people from the boys that have an autograph card in another set. So I think that would help as well with more and more people coming into the hobby and, and collecting what they like, you know, what kind of TV shows. Everybody has a f different favorite TV show. I mean, a lot of people like Stranger Things, but not everybody likes Stranger Things. Somebody might like Game of Thrones more than Stranger Things, right? So I think that would help with kind of building up the community for non-sports cards. So those are just some good good investment points that I would have. And now onto the bad side of it. Uh, this hobby is definitely a niche hobby. There isn't many people in in this hobby and never has been compared to sports cards. And I don't know if that would ever change because with this hobby, we are here to collect. I consider myself a full on in the non-sports card hobby. I collect a pretty wide range of, of different stuff. You know, I got one of Marvel, Stranger Things, Game of Thrones. I have some some Leaf Pop Century. I have Marvel, uh, Marvel Platinum cards. I have I have Garbage Pail Kids. I have Sket, you know what I mean? And we're here to collect. We don't we don't really do this for the money. We're here collecting our favorite TV shows, favorite movies. That's that's just what we do in this hobby. Let me know down below if you are in this hobby. If you are a non-sports card collector, I love you guys. We got to keep this community keep this community going. We got to build it up compared to, you know, there's not a lot of people in this on this hobby. And like I said earlier, you know, when you go to a card show, you just don't see much of it around. You don't people just don't collect it and partly part of that is because they don't even know it exists right there's been plenty of comments on my channel where they i open up a box or or i have a short where i buy a card and they'll say i didn't even know this existed i didn't even know this was out there right so i think that would that that kind of helps long term if it if the if the hobby never really grows you know you're you can't have a good investment if there's not a lot of people wanting to buy the card eventually, right? So I think that would help. Uh, that wouldn't help investing in this product, investing in this hobby. And another bad thing about these cards is that there's not really much that drives the prices up or down. It's more. It's really based off the fact of someone landing a lead role or or someone having a big role before the show got big and then it gets big and you know what I mean? In Game of Thrones, right? Daenerys Targaryen, Amelia Clark, she will forever be known as Daenerys Targaryen all time. And her autographs in Game of Thrones are the most expensive by far, easily, easily a thousand dollar card for autograph based off of one role, right? And she's acted in other stuff, but she'll forever be known as, as Daenerys Targaryen. And yeah, I just... It's very hard to prospect compared to sports cards, you know, looking at a, a, a character, right? You can't really predict a role that someone's going to land 10 years from now. It's just not, it's not easy to do because it, it's just, you can't predict stuff like that. I mean, it's kind of easier with sports because you have a prospect coming in that's highly touted and, and chances are that they're going to pan out in some way, shape or form and have some kind of value to the hobby, but you, you just can't do that with, with with actors or actresses, right? So those are some good points and some bad points that I found out that I, I was able to come to conclusion on. So I'm sure I missed something or, or, or anything. So let me know down below what you guys think. If you think that, you know, maybe you're trying to invest, what are you looking for? What are you not buying? What are you buying? anything about this topic i would love to hear hear from you down below i love talking to people in the comments and i think this would be a good topic of discussion to talk about so that is the video thank you guys for watching stay tuned Mom.